In Tuesday's conversation, we discussed allowing the mind to be still by acknowledging your true self being already the stillness, through which the mind automatically appears as still, through which body also automatically appears as still. And from this silence emerges the thoughts of our true nature of love and fulfillment in relationship with others. Today I want to relate this to the practical techniques in mental healing section from Joseph Murphy's book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. So this chapter discusses the importance of allowing the power of your subconscious mind, which already takes care of the healings of the body, to heal undesirable health conditions. And I'm not sure if I shared personal stories before on the healing powers of your subconscious mind. So here's one. I remember a while back I had this pain in my two front teeth. I went to the dentist and he said my wisdom teeth were pushing out and they were putting pressure on all of my top teeth, resulting in pain. So he wanted to remove the wisdom teeth. Then when they were removed, I got an infection above the two front teeth, which would swell up my upper lip. And for weeks, I would go back and forth to the dentist to clear up the infection and it wouldn't subside. So he took an x-ray and said, the infection seems to be now spreading to almost your nasal sinus cavities. And if it comes back one more time, we will need to do surgery. So what I did at that time was imagine that it would be the last time there for that reason. And sure enough, it stopped. It didn't come back. So he was like, wow, you're lucky. And then a few months after he took an x-ray and he said, not only is it not there, the part where it was damaging leading to your sinus had also been restored to normal. I've never seen anything like that so fast. So let's discuss this in relation to the chapter. But before that, let's talk about faith healings or healings by your beliefs. Now there are two views of the world, the spiritual view or the material view. The spiritual view suggests that consciousness is the true reality from which mind and mental phenomena in mind result in the appearance of the body and world which emanates from consciousness. We see this view in the various scriptures of the world. Then we have the material view, which is inverted. And by that I mean it suggests that from matter, body is formed, and from the body emerges mind, and within mind we have mental phenomena localized to the individual mind and body. It may also suggest that if it cannot be proven through known ways of reasoning, then it is not proven to exist. Whereas the spiritual view calls upon the unseen as though it is seen to make the unseen seen without the need to reason. I like a harmonious relationship between spirit and matter to bring forth the spiritual view of heaven and earth by which we are then free to connect the dots looking backwards, as Steve Jobs mentioned in his commencement speech. Now, the subconscious mind relates only with imagination, regardless of the outlook of life. And by subconscious mind, I'm not referring to the brain, which I believe is an emanation of mind, as I hold a spiritual outlook on this regard. Like the Kabbalion, I consider the all is mind, the universe is mental. Thus, we imagine what appears. So that stated, as one experiences life through the five senses, they imagine how they relate to the five sensory data, and thus imagine an impression upon the subconscious mind through which body and world emanate accordingly. If one disentangles the mind from identification to the world presented through the senses, as in the case with prayer, to imagine an impression onto the subconscious mind of how they would like it to be, the power of their subconscious mind takes that impression and emanates it in and as body and world accordingly. So it is helpful to understand the individual subconscious mind in relation to the world, in relation to the body, and in relation to the infinitely intelligent power that takes what is impressed upon the subconscious mind and externalizes it for you. So there's an aspect of the subconscious mind where beliefs are stored. Some within conscious awareness and some remain dormant outside of conscious awareness unless they are reactivated. 
For example, if a person believes that they will be healed if they have a health concern in their body. Sure enough, in this regard, they allow the unseen power of infinite intelligence to take care of it for them, without stressing or worrying, which these are a result of subconsciously controlling beliefs. So what I recommend is never believing anything that stifles the flow of the healing power. And also release identification to any beliefs that result in stifling the flow of the healing power. Remember, there's only one cause and it is within. And there's only one power and it is one with the cause. How we relate to the cause and power subconsciously is through beliefs. So simply put, we ideally allow our intentional imaginal acts of well-being to flow automatically without impedance from subconscious beliefs not true. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This also means we truly desire to allow the unseen power emerging from the silence to take the ideal suggestions of well-being from the silence which is your true nature, and allow that to be impressed upon the subconscious mind, which in my case was an auto-suggestion, and allow that impression to be externalized for you. So now we may have defined many concepts like personal identity, self-image, concept of self, and worldview, which represent our inner relationship with the outer expressions of life made visible through the senses, which include people, environment, circumstances, and information. So if you look at the definition of personal identity, one has it as person's characteristics, beliefs, values, and experiences that define their individuality. If you look at the definition of self-image, one has it as mental and emotional perception an individual holds of themselves which encompasses a person's beliefs about their own identity, abilities, appearance, and role in the world. If you look at the definition of the concept of self, one has it as multidimensional construct that encompasses an individual's beliefs, perceptions, and understanding of themselves. And if you look at the definition of worldview, one has it as worldview includes a wide range of concepts, beliefs, and values that shapes one's understanding of reality. And it goes on to say key components of a worldview may include metaphysical beliefs, epistemological beliefs, beliefs about human nature, religious and spiritual beliefs, cultural beliefs, social and political beliefs, environmental beliefs, and cosmological beliefs. And within all of these groupings of self-image, personal identity, worldview, and concept of self, we see a commonality, and that is the word belief. So I actually like to simplify this all further by saying this world plays out automatically to mirror belief identification. In Matthew 9.29, the Aramaic Bible in plain English translation, we see, Then he touched their eyes and he said, Just as you have believed, let it be done to you. And interestingly, we see many other translations of Matthew 9.29, about 40 that I looked at, to say faith. For example, the New Living Translation says, Then he touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith it will happen. And one translation, the Amplified Bible Translation says, Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, and then in brackets it says, Your trust and confidence in my power and my ability to heal, and brackets, it will be done to you. So we see here faith, belief, and trust used as synonyms. In this regard, some may prefer belief, some may prefer faith, and some trust, which trust derives from reliability, fidelity, faithfulness. And one definition of belief has it as a mental attitude or conviction that something is true, real, or exists even in the absence of concrete evidence or proof. So simply put, one can accept an ideal subconscious belief that is helpful and supports their true nature of well-being. Even if they don't believe it through repetition, for example, as taught by Emile Coué, every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day, in every way, 
I'm getting better and better. Now, in The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, Joseph Murphy refers to the law as the law of belief. I refer to it as the law of life, as in you are life itself, and life appears through law. And interestingly, Joseph Murphy also said, the law of life is the law of belief. A belief is a thought in your mind. Do not believe in things to harm or hurt you. Believe in the power of your subconscious to heal, inspire, strengthen, and prosper you. According to your belief, it is done unto you. Change your thoughts and change your destiny. So a few insights from my personal experience mentioned earlier was, right prior to having the infection, I was going through a period in my life where I was identifying more so with negative beliefs, which were unhealthy from which it appeared as visible signs of unhealthy. See, we have the ability to look at what we say about ourselves, others, and the world to reveal what we are subconsciously believing, to determine if what we are believing is healthy or not. And no shame or condemnation. Now is the moment to engage in healthy inner speech from the premise of our true nature, which is well-being. Joseph Murphy says, Everyone is definitely concerned with the healing of bodily conditions and human affairs. What is it that heals? Where is the healing power? Answer is that the healing power is in the subconscious minds of each person. And a changed mental attitude on the part of the sick person releases this healing power. So to release the healing power, as he suggested, we carry on inner speech from already being ideal now which can also be an ongoing habit till it's accepted as that's the way it is, such as every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. He says, the modern mental therapeutic procedure is based on the truth that the infinite intelligence and power of your subconscious mind responds according to your faith. The mental science practitioner or minister follows the injunction of the Bible. He goes into his closet and shuts the door, which means he stills his mind, relaxes, lets go, and thinks of the infinite healing presence within him. He closes the door of his mind to all outside distractions as well as appearances, and then he quietly and knowingly turns over his request or desire to his subconscious mind, realizing that the intelligence of his mind will answer him according to his specific needs. The most wonderful thing to know is this. Imagine the end desired and feel its reality. Then the infinite life principle will respond to your conscious choice and your conscious request. This is the meaning of believe you have received and you shall receive. This is what the modern mental scientist does when he practices prayer therapy. So in summary, the key is when it comes to prayer or autosuggestion, which is a form of prayer, is it is done from the premise of already having. Prayer is thus acknowledgement of already having. You can also simply capture the feeling of thank you, I'm already healed. Mark 11.24 Therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I allow the infinite healing power of my subconscious mind to bring forth my true nature of healing and well-being through my mind and through my body and through the world every day in every possible way. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.